I think I am good to go. Hopefully Bubbles can hear me and there's no technical difficulties with the sound. So Bubbles, if you are ready on that timer, let's go ahead and do three, two, one, go. And as with all of my runs, I'm doing a see absolutely none of the story, and that includes seeing none of the introduction tutorial. Apparently my skills are dazzling. So, the story in this game, as I understand it, is Dad really likes to party, and he's the king of all cosmos. One night he has a few too many drinks, and decides to blow up all the stars, and he's like, Oh, Prince, you're short, you'll fix everything. So he, he makes us go around and fix the whole freaking world for him, cleaning up after his mess. And so our job is to roll up these little things called Katamaris, which will be turned into stars. And it starts off sort of simple. You roll over little things, and then you roll over bigger things. And you're trying to get to a certain size each level. I do have to say, of all the games that I've learned to speedrun, this has been my favorite. I, I do think we need more people learning to speedrun this game as well. It's a very nice community. I've had some of the... The world record holder came into my chat one day and was talking about the game, giving me pointers and tips. Very friendly community, very fun game to speedrun, very fun game to play in general. It's a classic from the old PS2 era, the old PS2 era. Uh, got a lot of attention at the time, but... It never seemed to hit, like, huge mainstream. It was always just one of those sort of things for people in the know to know about. It's one of those uh, weird, quirky Japanese games. The speedrun for it gets to take advantage of a lot of really fun things about it, where you just start picking up so much stuff so fast, it becomes very satisfying. When you play the game through the normal way, you're like hunting for the next thing to pick up, you don't know your way around, but in the speedrun, you pretty much cut through all of that, and you just get to be very targeted. So you're always picking something up once you know your way around. And you're always getting that fun little sound effect that means you just grew up a little. is going to be through the steam tip portion. There you go, that donate command. Oh, there's a story going on this whole time about these two little kids with an astronaut father, and the dad's supposed to like go on a mission to the moon, and the kids are super excited to go and watch, and well, the moon's gone. Like, the stars and the moon and everything in the night sky is gone, so the astronaut's going to have a pretty bad time when he tries to land. 
In the meantime, though, I'm just gonna like rolling up toothbrushes here on Earth. so fun and so frustrating at times though is the controls really do have a lot of random elements to them. Uh, they're usually what would be described as icy. So you end up like doing a lot of these little shimmies to take advantage of just the way it uh, accelerates you and the way it moves you. If you're turning, you don't lose your boost speed as quickly, so that's kind of why I zigzag as much. So that was about 20 seconds longer on that episode than I wanted to spend. It's not too bad, though. So this time, this, oh, I'm going to get the old one in the shopping cart, Nipkins. Nipkins knows what the run's about. But this time I'm also going to do yellow strats, and this is a level with a very particular jump that I get roughly three-fourths of the time that I try it. The problem is when I go for the jump, if I don't get it, it kind of can go really, really bad in really interesting ways. So hopefully I don't have to restart the level completely. Since this is for charity, I do like to do the yellow strats. No! Oh, that's... Actually, that's the worst case scenario. Of course, I can't pick those up. Oh, that's... <laughs> that was the absolute worst case scenario. That's exactly what I was talking about being afraid of. Uh, if I get wedged into that little area there, there's not a good way out. I'm, it kind of just kills the run. I was just a little, little, little too far to the right, and there's nothing to pick up on that side of it. That's sort of a sequence breaky ramp. Oh, I have not missed that in a in a good run in a while. Oops. And the worst part is I've been doing a lot of individual level practice lately, so I can still make that mistake, still reset the level, and still get a personal best on the total. That's what was supposed to happen, by the way. And I went back and tried it again just because it looked so super impressive when I pulled it off. Then I like to show it off. So even though it was not time efficient for me to do it...
Star Four is the bane of my existence today. Hopefully this is the only one part of the game that's purple. Little girl, I hate you so much! Reset, that was a really good time on there. With a reset, I'm kind of a minute behind where I want to be. Which is a little depressing. you end up getting bigger and bigger. You start out in a, a little child's living room, and then by the end you're rolling up an entire city. He and I'm in the park, just sort of hanging out, seeing kids. screwed up in this thing, uh, but that was a little obvious because I had to turn around. Do you think Shopping Cart Lady's gonna screw me this time? We'll see. So, some of the AI is on a strict uh, path, and some of the AI is completely random. This lady here with a shopping cart is completely random. I have not found any ways of doing AI manipulation on her. And sometimes she does hang out exactly where I need to go, and she can kill runs for me. She is pretty much my worst enemy in this entire game, this Shopping Cart Lady. And she's gone! So she'll often hang out on those blue buckets that I have to- Oh! She was just trying to hang out in those blue buckets. I don't know if you saw her. She came up right behind me. That was very nearly very bad for me.
There was a donation sound. Oh, I'm, I'm not looking at the stream very much. Oh, $80 of donations already. Thank you, guys. This is for a very great cause. Donations today are going towards Doctors Without Borders. Wonderful organization. Highly recommend a donation for it. Shut up, Dad. I ain't got time for your stories. This is a speed run for charity. So when I was learning this game, this was the first level that actually started giving me a lot of trouble. Each level gets longer and longer than last. Ugh, and sometimes the AI positioning on these will really just sort of give me trouble. But eventually I found a path in this level that is I think the current world record path, actually. But it also works pretty well for my style of playing. Which is one of the big problems I had was different styles seem to be different levels of level on different levels. Or different uh, effectiveness on different levels. And this is one where. Uh, this is one where my, the path fork seems to go well with my style of play. Which includes me never liking the stuff. playthrough is the use of that boost where you hit the control sticks a certain way and fly at high speed. And it took me a really long time to feel good about getting timing for that at all. this way, because normally I have my chat that I'm talking to the whole time, or I have other people in the room with me, so this commentary is probably some of the worst commentary I've ever given. Apologies for that. This is one of my favorite levels. This is Ursa Major, and the a, a point of this level is to get the biggest Katamari you can before touching any bears, because Dan wants a bear, and as soon as you touch a bear, the level's over, but you want to get the biggest Katamari you can without touching a bear. Because as soon as you touch a bear, the level's over. And we're speedrunning, so the level's over now. And Bubbles, I know this is this is my chat today for the head crab love. Dad's super disappointed my Katamari's not bigger. Ugh, just like your Dad, come on! Don't be a dad. So each of the stars before now was just a few minutes, but now I'm going to get into like some stars that take me maybe three, four, or five minutes to do. Or seven, eight, nine, and moon. I think moon might take me like, uh, star nine and moon might be six minute levels for me. Like half of the game is these last four levels. Oof. 
Some of those random controls include when you boost, it doesn't always go off when you expect it to. And sometimes you don't go very far with a boost, just because you happen to hit geometry in just the wrong way. Ah, and that's a little bit of the AI screwing me, but guy doesn't always... Or doesn't normally take that walking path you just did. So getting kicked down there after kind of sucks. Because now the other guys that are on a closed loop are not where I expect them to be. Right? And yes, that was a car and a tractor falling off in a void. Oops. said earlier today, I'm like right on my splits right now, so there's that. <sighs> so these kids are still on their trip to go see their dad launching the space at like a gas station chatting. I guess that's where people talk sometimes. Songs for my favorites. So, the same way I yell about shopping cart lady, this dog can also screw me in this level. 
Well, when the dog's first me in this level, it's always my own fault. Because the dog, in this level, is actually on a very strict pattern. He just runs in a very specific circle. Seems like culturally uh, relevant to our situation. So I'm, I'm cosplaying Big Bad Wolf by eating little pigs or something. store, an outdoor grocery store. That's not where you cosplay. So two levels to go. I'm actually making much better time than I expected. So my hour estimate's actually going to be very mean for 
for Bubbles as he needs to figure out what game goes on next, and I might be done early. Oh, but Bubbles is following me, so if he needs to start early, then... So Starline is the star I have the most trouble with. This one can go great for me sometimes and terribly others. And I have absolutely no way of knowing what it's going to be until I look at the time at the end of the level. Ooh, that's one of the things that can make me sad. Still Sparrow is a little bit random in where he walks. I should be boosting through here, but all the AI is like standing right where I need to be. Wow, that was quite a cluster. These guys are a lot quicker. To be a single star in the sky, I hear you calling me. So I have to boost when I hit those logs, because as soon as I pick up one log, it comes huge on me. But if you're boosting, it changes your geometry to be a perfect sphere. So a lot of the time when you see me, like, nudging up against objects, and I try and boost like I'm touching the wall already, because I'm trying to uh, rotate myself into a perfect sphere, so I can make pickups like that easier. Unfortunately now I'm like super lopsided as I come up here to a very difficult thing. Please. Okay. That's the hardest skip in the game for me, and I got it uh only second try, so that's really good. And that was a very fast second try. <laughs> Start picking up the trees in this level, it's huge. Nice. 
So that was a good one. I'm just rolling up those cities. I feel really bad for the villagers skin, but apparently they like it. They, uh, at the end of the game, it talks about how happy everyone is that you rolled them up and sent them into space. So that's nice. Like, I'm, I'm glad that they're able to have a positive, uh, attitude about their outfit. Sometimes I get up that immediately, and sometimes it gives me real trouble. Five forty-six is a really good time there. That was a gold. Uh, that, not a gold split. But that was a really good split for me. Five forty-six is a fantastic time for me here. Oh, I can't go to the moon because there's no moon. Oh no! That is sad. I'll make him a moon. Alright, this is the last level. I probably have about, uh... If I was good at the game, four minutes. I have about six minutes until, uh, game over. So, Bubbles, if you want to know that you'll need to be ready on time in a little bit. I don't fall off that wow I actually got off that Once by the elephant I ate. Oh. Ice cream. I mean, one ice cream made me miss the mailbox. I really hate that elephant, by the way. I don't know who arranges their desks like this on a hill without even a teacher nearby, but whatever. Like, I'm not a teacher, so I don't know how it's supposed to work. But I assume that's not normally how you conduct a class. I do want to point out the one American they have in this entire game. The one person who they guess we get is American is a fat guy who needlessly hops around. I feel a little offended, but I can't argue with this So when I said I was getting near the end, I totally, totally lied, apparently, because I was doing very bad on this last level. And if I got to buy the train, I would have
gonna get off? Am I not big enough for that? That's troublesome. There we go. Oh, God, why am I stuck? There we go. Uh, let me out. destroying the uh, Japanese industry here. I guess this is uh, one way to put valuable resources on the moon, is to keep making people go back to the moon to get back the crap that I stole the uh, question for you guys. How's this working? Well enough whirlpools. I know you're not supposed to go chasing uh, waterfalls, but they never said anything about whirlpools and sucking them up into a katamari to build a moon. 
clearly that song didn't think of everything. That's not a PB, but that's not terrible time. Alright, that's time, so uh, here we go.